This week's video is sponsored by Case. Capture with confidence. Good morning guys, hope you're all doing well and welcome to this fantastic little waterfall that we found today. Such a beautiful little area. It's kind of springtime so we've got lots of lush greens and lots of new growth and it just looks absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to work around this firstly today. We've kind of walked in through a, a bit of a bluebell glade as well and that looks really nice. We've got some decent light today where the sun's kind of hidden behind clouds sometimes and moving through so we've got change in light so I think it's going to be a really good day for this kind of photography hopefully and yeah I really want to get into photographing this waterfall because it, it's although there's not a lot of water as you can see it's quite a picturesque waterfall there's lots of streams of water coming down we've got some lovely green foliage and that's provide, proving to be a little bit of an issue so we're having to watch what's happening there but all the uh, ferns and everything are just starting to come out now so it looks really really nice so i'll get you to the back of the camera as soon as i get a composition set up and walk you through my thinking so now that i've got this set up i'll just press record on the back of here now so this letterbox format works really well here because i want to capture this wide scene we've got this tree that comes down on the left side and i'm trying to use that almost like a frame and then we've got this boulder, this rock on this right side here, which I'm doing the same with. So I'm kind of anchoring the, the um, waterfall itself between these two points. So I've got the, that boulder off to the right, which is catching some nice ambient light up there as well, actually. Now my focus point, I'll just select that so you can see, is that boulder, which is down in the water there with the flowers on top of it, which will probably make a nice shot itself. Um, but I'm using that as my focus point because it's just just on that lower third there. Now as for the water speed itself, I'm trying to get about a quarter of a second, a fifth of a second somewhere around there. Because there's not that much water coming down, so I'm just trying to give a little bit of movement to that water. Obviously there's not a lot of it, so it doesn't really matter too much. But as long as you can see that it's there and it's got a bit of flow and movement to it, I think that's all that really matters for me here. The main sort of points of interest for me are all the foliage and everything that are around the bottoms of the frame. Now that's what I'm having to really watch because every now and then the wind will actually get up and move all that foliage. And because I'm at a quarter of a second for the water, obviously I'm getting movement in those leaves. So I have taken a couple of shots at faster shutter speeds so I can slow those leaves down in case I need to paint them back in and post later. But actually the more I'm standing here, as the light's changing as well, which obviously gives us different looks with the image, also the uh, the wind is kind of picking up and dying down as well. So if I can wait for a point for that to just settle and then grab the shot, I think it'll be absolutely fine. So I'm gonna grab this first shot, which is this uh, pano image, and then I'm gonna move around and find something else. And I'll pop this image up for you now.
Now I've moved over to the other side now and just up here there's actually some primroses which are kind of off to the right hand side of the waterfall and I think that'll look a really nice shot if I can isolate the water flowing down and the, uh, the primroses off to the right hand side, probably a square crop, something like that. But I'll go and grab the camera, get set up and see how I can compose it and make it work best. So guys, I'll just show you what I've got on the back of my camera. I'll press record now. Right, so as you can see, I'm using a letterbox again. Now I've tried a square crop here and what I'm actually finding is it's not working so well because you've got the way this is balanced I've got the prim these primroses off to the right hand side of the frame with no water in it at all so you've got this kind of dry side of the frame and then the waterfall coming down and I really like the contrast between the falling water and those primroses on the right hand side when I go in square I can't actually get in tight enough to make it work so I'm using this letterbox format again and I've found that that it seems to look the most balanced and the best that I can get it on here. I've got those primroses both in there, both sets, and you can see they're just sitting in a little bit of a crevice there on that right hand side. Now what I'm waiting for is obviously the light's gone at the minute and we were just getting a few spots of rain a minute ago, but when the light actually hits and illuminates those primroses and also the mosses that are clinging to the rocks, it's got quite a, quite a nice sort of depth and dimension to the image. When there's nothing on it at all, it's a bit flat and uninteresting. So it's mostly a case of just waiting for the light to happen. Now, we're in part, a bit of a canyon down here, so we really need the clouds to part and that light to come through to make it work. But I think it's just a really sort of simple image. I wanted to simplify it as much as possible. So I've pulled my camera off to the left so that you haven't got as much of that grass and distraction on that right hand side and mainly just the flowers themselves and the falling water. So I'm at about a fifth of a second at the minute, hopefully you can see that. I'm focused on the prim first lot of primroses themselves because I want those to be sharp. It doesn't matter so much about the falling water but I've gone for a fifth of a second because I kind of, I like the way but when the light was hitting it before, about a fifth of a second was just kind of making that water stand out and glint, almost. So uh, yeah, going for that. So as soon as I get a bit of light and I can capture this shot, I'll pop that shot up for you. This week's video is sponsored by Case Filters Magnetic Revolution System, made from toughened Wolverine glass, lightweight, fast and optically neutral. Be part of the revolution. Right guys, so I'll show you the back of the screen here, I'll just press record on here now. I can find it, there we go. Right, so we've just walked up the hill literally from where that uh, waterfall was and just noticed this scene here. Now it's kind of light dependent again, which a lot of these shots really are. But I'm using this strip pano again, and obviously bluebells. And what I've got is on the left and right hand side of the frame, we've got trees. So I've got a tree leaning in from the right and a tree leaning in from the left. I'm trying to balance it that way. And then further off in the distance, obviously you've got some smaller trees leading its way through there. And then when the light comes, it's doing one of two things. It's actually hitting the bluebells and illuminating them. And it's also lighting up the background. So it's adding a bit of depth to the image. So when that light hits back there, on the left hand side, just in the left top corner of the frame, you can see there's some really light colored foliage and that's getting lit by the sun. And that's kind of acting like a bit of point of interest as well to lead the eye through. 
Now, obviously, the main point of interest is I want you to kind of look right the way through and, and follow the wood through, follow the carpet of bluebells through. But yeah, I think it's really nice scene, but very light dependent. And as I said earlier on today, we're getting that today because we've got cloud and then sunshine behind that. And then every now and then it's illuminating and it's looking really, really good that way. So I've just been taking shots as the light improves. It's just about to come again. Here we go. So all I'm doing is adjusting the exposure when the light starts to hit, because obviously it's getting lighter all the time and then grabbing a shot. I've got my focus point right in the middle there. F16, um, a sixth of a second, because there's barely any wind at all at the minute. ISO 100, and then just adjusting my exposure to match the light. Just making sure I don't get any hot spots or clip it anywhere, and just checking the image once I've taken it, just to make sure I bring the histogram up and make sure there's no blinkies or anything like that. I can see it's off to the left, so I'm more than fine, because some of those trees are kind of silhouette, silhouetted there. And then I'll just take another shot now. And yeah, simple shot, there's nothing complicated about it at all, but I'll pop the shot up for you now. Right guys, so we just made our way away from that waterfall and along some back roads and we actually found this place called Duddo Stone Circle. And as you can see, the clouds around us right now are absolutely beautiful. So I'm gonna have to handhold this and I'll explain why just in a second. I'll press record on the back of here now and bring up the exposure so you can see what I'm looking at. Now, as you can see there, if I lift myself up slightly like this, you can see I'm losing separation with that stone circle. And basically what's happening, I'm getting all those fields and trees and everything in the background. So I'm lowering myself down and getting really quite low. And now I've got a piece of rain on my lens, which isn't great. So I'm gonna have to clean that just a second. That's the only problem with this weather. So, lowering myself down so that I eliminate all of those distractions. I'll bring the exposure down so you can see the sky and you can see how dramatic it is. So I'm at a 60th of a second at the minute, F16 ISO 100. I'm just gonna check that I'm more or less level, although I can straighten that up later. And then focus on that first stone. Now you can see I've separated them as best as I can and then grab that shot. And then once I've got that shot, I'll bring it up on the back of the camera, bring up the uh, blinkies and make sure I haven't overexposed any of that sky because I really want to keep all that detail if possible. Now there's a tiny little bit there, but it's not gonna cause me any issues. The one thing I'm going to have to do though is take two shots, one for the actual foreground and one for the sky, because obviously I want a bit of directional light on those stones. And 
I'll just take that again, make sure I'm level, and then take the shot again. And then what I'll do is, is paint that sky in over the top of that image. Now hopefully we'll get a bit more directional light on these stones, that would be nice, just to add to it. But really, when we've seen this scene, because all the fields around us are mainly green, this wouldn't be a shot without the sky above it. The sky is actually making the shot. It's, it's so dramatic and moody, it's actually making this whole image. So hopefully if I get enough light on these stones, enough ambient light and everything, I'll pop the image up for you. See the weather's starting to come in now and I think we can hear thunder going off in the distance there so uh, yeah we're going to call it quits before we get soaked. Anyway I hope you've enjoyed this week's video, like and subscribe if you have and I'll see you on the next video soon. Take care, bye bye.